Hello everyone and welcome! Since the end of 2016 arrived, I thought it would be a good idea to look back at the best stories and champions of the year. That's why today I want to talk about few different categories. We will call out the best visual design, the best champion gameplay design, the best voiceover, the best champion bio, and lastly the best short story. So let's look back at what we've been through. In the year 2016, Riot released 6 new champions. It seems like a low number, but it is one more than we got in 2015, where we got only 5 champions. Among the champions of 2016, we have Jin, the Virtuoso, Aurelian Sol, the Starforger, Talia, the Stoneweaver, Glad, the Cantankerous Cavalier, Ivern, the Greenfather, and finally Camille, the Steel Shadow. Each category will have its own top 3 list. Qualified is everyone released or reworked in 2016. Keep in mind that all the choices are based on my opinion alone. It is highly probable that you will not agree with me. So let's begin with the first category. The best visual design. This year Riot really stepped up their game. They made sure each new champion or newly reworked champion is as visually appealing as possible. The progress in Riot's design team is undeniable. They knew exactly how to turn even the simplest human into an interesting character. In this category I will focus purely on the visuals, including spells and animations. So at number 3 we have Tariq. Tariq was a huge surprise for me. Even before his rework was announced, I saw a couple of fan models and I thought Riot would surely get some inspiration from them. I thought they would turn him into a knight, similar to what he was before. But instead we got a charming handsome man. And you know what? It works! His animations are perfect, you get a sense of high being from them. Half of it is achieved by the fact that you can cast abilities while running. And the actual spell animations enhance it even further. Overall, Tariq is a beautiful package of might and elegance. At number 2 we have Aurelian Soul. Aurelian brought entirely new visual effects into the game. Never before have we seen body parts freely following the rest of the body. It looks simple, but using the old League engine this is very impressive. Last time Riot tried something like this was when Nocturne got released. And looking at Nocturne, you can see it didn't go too well. Apart from this new feature, his actual model is very simple and there are a couple of reasons why it works. First of all, his entire model and spells have two primary colors, blue and gold, with occasional purple. These colors alone do all the work. If you look at someone without simple color scheme, for example Echo, you can see that what makes him special is his weapon. The other thing that helped Aurelian's model is his transparent tail. Not only does it move around, but it is also transparent and it fades into stars. Most people don't even notice it while playing him, because it fits perfectly. Aurelian simply pushed champion's design over a new edge. And the champion with the best visual design of 2016 is Yorick. Released in September 2016. Yorick is arguably the best reworked champion Riot ever put out. You can really see the combination of death and beauty in his model. On one side you have the Black Mist trying to claim him, and on the other side you have Yorick with the last will to live, keeping his mind calm so he can figure out what happened to the Blessed Isles. It is hard to appreciate what Yorick truly is. His model is great, the shovel, the vial, the tombstones on his back, but that's not all. You have to count in the ghouls, the wall of death and of course the maiden of the mist. His title is Shepherd of Souls, just to make it interesting. But he is exactly what you would imagine under the name Undertaker. The decision between Aurelian and Yorick was hard, but in the end Yorick is the harvest of the best Riot had to offer. The best champion gameplay design. Throughout the last few years, Riot learned that releasing a simple champion won't cut it. These days every champion with brand new and confusing mechanics enhances the game for everyone else. The best example is probably Mordekaiser. 
He was designed to be a duo partner in every lane. And on that matter, to destroy the meta as we know it. Everything just because he earns more XP in a duo lane. Initially it worked, but as people figured out how to play against him, this whole idea died. So now, let's talk about other champions that grabbed our interests in this year. The first one I want to mention is Ivern. Obviously I had to talk about him. Ivern became the weirdest, most game-twisting champion Riot ever had the pleasure to work at. Almost every single ability, including his passive, breaks the game. And I love it. His Q makes his allies dash into attack range, W makes bushes, E is not too special, Ultimate summons incredibly fast Daisy which forces the enemy to peel for their carries, and then of course his passive which opens entire new way to jungling. Overall, it fits his theme really well. You are not the guardian of nature, you are the nature. You make flowers bloom and animals happy. I think it would be good to mention that the last time we got a comedy champion was in 2014 with Braum. And if you don't count Braum, then we go back to 2013 when we got Zack. It is just good to know that League is not all about the serious characters. Second one in this category is Rise. At first I was sad that I didn't mention Rise in the graphic design category. But then I realized I have to talk about him in the gameplay part. His spells alone are not too mind-blowing. I mean, they were in the game since pretty much its release. What's great about his kit is that it all works together like a machine. And just like that, if you screw up one part of it, you may lose a lot of damage. And when you execute it properly, it feels really good. Another thing is that it fits his theme really well. He is an Archmage that is constantly moving and traveling around the world trying to save humanity from itself. Not only is his movement fast and his actual casting animations quick, but his spells too are fast and snap onto the target. It really fits the fantasy of being an arcane mage using runic powers. And on top of that he has the iconic spell of an archmage, Realm Warp. I remember when a lot of pro players questioned this ability. Most of them agreed that it was just a random spell in his kit and it didn't really fit. In reality, it is part of his character. And just like with Ivern, it can break the game if you use it correctly. Let's just hope this was the last of Ryze's reworks. And the champion with the best gameplay design in 2016 is Jin. When we first got teased about Jin, we had no idea what he even was. The theories blew all over the community. And you know what's funny? Even now we don't really know all the connections to that teaser. A week later we learned that he was a murderer and an artist. And his abilities fit it perfectly. When you play Jin, you feel like a killer, like a mastermind or an assassin. You plant traps around, you wait for the right moment, you look for the right minions for your bouncing grenade. And while doing all of that, you keep counting in your head. Every fourth shot is a window for a play. Do you engage or do you keep it to threaten them? Or do you satisfyingly last it a minion? Everything you do as Jin is based around strategic decisions. As it should be for someone trying to assassinate his target quickly from a distance. The best voiceover. This is the category I had the most trouble with. It is so hard to pick from all the characters and their awesome voice actors. So I will try to focus on a single factor, which voice fits their character the best. So for number 3, I picked Jin. I can't really do his voice actor, Quinton Flynn, justice by explaining his work. He managed to nail the voice of a mad artist. But besides Jin, he also voiced many other characters, like Keltas from the Warcraft series, Raiden from Metal Gear Solid, or Silver from Sonic the Hedgehog. You will be beautiful. There is no drama in a peaceful death. I am the singer without a voice, the dancer without legs. I swear each performance is the last, but I lie every time. I want to feel everything. The gun makes it so I do. I envy silence. 
because I must be loud. At number 2, we have Aurelian Soul. Half of the job is done by the voice actor himself, but the effects and filters on top of it really give Aurelian a mighty presence. Neil Kaplan is known for his powerful voice. Besides Aurelian Soul, he also voiced Takus from StarCraft, Madara from Naruto, or Cenarius from World of Warcraft. Only when darkness overwhelms the heavens will Targon realize its folly. Targon will be the pyre from which I forge a new heaven. I grieve for every star never born. Hope, wonder, insignificance. Imagine what they'll feel when I complete the stars. Your fate was sealed the moment you picked up Targon's spear. And at number one, I absolutely had to put Glad, voiced by Spike Spencer. What an incredible job he has done. I remember listening to his voice for the first time. I couldn't believe he didn't pass out during the recording. Never have I seen such a great performance that would fit an old veteran soldier. Spike Spencer also voiced Wukong, a two-man from World of Warcraft, the Taser guy from Payday 2, or Mart from Fire Emblem. I'll say something, Winnie! After I kill you, I'm gonna cut you open and use your spine for a back scratcher because it is itchy, very itchy. There's fixing to be two sounds: me hitting you and Payday. I came here to. Well, I don't know what I came here for, but I'm gonna defend it. Why ain't they saluting me? They should be saluting me! Salute me now! You just justified a preemptive retaliatory strike! Wait, Tiger Pool! Tiger, wait! Don't worry! Them voices ain't telling me to kill you no more! Yeah, of course we still gonna kill him. The best champion bio. And now we get into the categories where I really want you to pay attention. The stories that I will mention here are must-read story for everyone even remotely interested in the lore. If I cover these, there will be links on the screen, but I still want you to read the stories. There are parts that I could never recreate in a video format, just because the scenes were meant to be read, not watched. The final scene in Camille's story, or the part where Aurelian talked to Pantheon, were just breathtaking. So let's jump into the best bio of 2016. At number 3, I had to put Rise. The story of a young apprentice mastering arcane magics under his lead of Master Tyrus really took me by surprise. I thought Riot would stick to the original plan of him being a mage guarding an important artifact, but they improved on the story by adding the world runes, which explain a lot of other events. The twist at the end where Ryze had to become the Archmage and learn the secrets of the scroll even opened a window for theories. We don't really know what the scroll contains, but we know it is something of a huge scale, since Ryze had to fully commit to his new task. At number 2 we have Ivern. Easily one of my favorite stories of the year. It pictures Ivern's life before he became what he is now. I don't really want to spoil too much, because it is honestly beautiful and heartwarming story. And for once it shows the bright side of the world. If you haven't read his story, you absolutely must. And this leaves us with the best champion bio Riot released in 2016. It should be no surprise to anyone that the number one on my list is Aurelian Soul. Written by Matthew Fawkeschizel Dune. This is an awesome story about the creation of the universe and Aurelian's first contact with Runeterra. It is a great story that gives us a perspective on the world and to some degree it explains how this universe works. I never thought space stories would exist in League of Legends, but Riot made it work. In short, this is a story that combines space and science together with mythical gods and warriors from the heavens. The best short story. These stories usually expand on the bio of a champion. Sometimes they are bound to a specific champion and sometimes they tell the story of an entire region. Just like with the bios, I will try to avoid most of the spoilers to let you have the full experience. 
So let's end this video with the best stories that dug deep into the lore. Number 3. The Bird and the Branch This story was released before we even knew who Talia was. And that was a powerful tool to set our imaginations free. The Bird and the Branch tells a tale of Talia, a Shuriman girl that was recruited into the Noxian army during the war against Ionia. There she met Yasuo, and the rest of the story is for you to explore. Number 2. Bloodline 12 chapters of story focused on Shurima. This masterpiece includes 5 different champions we care about, cities we heard about before, and great battles including Zerath against Nasus. This story begins with Talia making her way into Belzoon, after which she travels toward the heart of Shurima. On her way she finds Sivir which made her to stop for a few days. And what happened next opened a massive story. Number 1. The story I am going to mention is just a part of a bigger picture. I highly recommend not only to read this story, but also to read everything related to this one. Because the best story of 2016 and arguably the best story Riot ever released is The Weakest Heart. Written by Ariel Thormel Kitten Lawrence. This story had absolutely everything. Drama, emotions, actions, relationships, plot twists. This was not just a story to expand on the lore of a champion. If they ever decide to expand on it, it could very easily be a book. The weakest heart starts with Camille attending her duties as the principal intelligencer of Clan Pharaohs. But in the middle of one of her missions, everything changed not only her future, but also the future of her family. Before you decide to read this story, I highly recommend reading her bio first, as it contains a lot of important information. And that's it for the best of 2016. Did you agree with me or do you have your own favorites? You can either tell me in the comment section or you can join my Discord channel where I am surprisingly active. But you can also have a look at my Twitter or Facebook. Thank you everyone so much for watching and as always, thank you come again. So I just wanted to add one last message for the year 2016. I know that for a lot of people, especially people just in general in the world, 2016 was not the best year by any means, but for me it opened a huge window into life. As weird as it may sound, I actually have so many more options in terms of doing YouTube full time than I ever had. And I really hope that together we can grow even more. I never really wanted to do anything else apart from YouTube. It has always been my goal and I think it will always be. So I just wanted to thank you from the very bottom of my heart because you guys made my dream reality. I wish you the best for the 2017. Don't get any New Year's resolutions because we all know how it works. You always write it down but never do it because the way it actually works you need to start doing it on your own. Don't force yourself into it. Just when you feel like it, start whatever you want to do and never stop. Again, thank you so much and let's all hope 2017 will be way better.